My name's Claire Turnbull. I am a professor in medical genomics and I'm also an honorary consultant in clinical genetics and public health medicine. In both my clinical and research work, I study cancer susceptibility genetics and using this genetic information to identify individuals at elevated risk of cancer. High penetrance mutations in cancer susceptibility genes underlie a number of cases of cancer and this varies by tumour type. So if you take malignant paraganglioma, that's north of 40% to due to high penetrance mutations. Ovarian cancer, it's 15 to 20%, whereas breast and colorectal, it's nearer 5%. Whilst traditionally the germline genome was the realm of the clinical geneticist, and the somatic genome was the realm of the oncologist, we have increasingly seen a blurring of those lines, in particular because we are understanding the biology of cancer susceptibility genes better, and this means that we are now using um, information from those variants to inform on the cancer management of the patient both in terms of sensitivity to conventional chemotherapeutics, but also to targeted drugs as well. For example, identification of a BRCA1 mutation in a woman with a new diagnosis of triple negative breast cancer. This would impact on her management in a number of ways. Firstly, on her surgical management, she might elect to have bilateral mastectomy rather than just a lumpectomy, and that would mitigate her future risk of ipsilateral or contralateral breast cancer. Secondly, the BRCA1 mutation would inform how we manage her. We would potentially give her platinum therapy and potentially use a PARP inhibitor in the adjuvant setting. Thirdly, she might then go on to have additional preventative surgery to mitigate her future risk of ovarian cancer. Um, and fourthly, of course, we would then know of the BRCA1 mutation in the family and we could then cascade relatives at risk and manage them accordingly. Whilst our treatments for cancer have improved dramatically over the last 50 years, it's still better to identify individuals at risk of cancer before it happens and use our screening technology so we can catch that cancer really early before it has a poor prognosis so we can manage it better or even better than that, that we um, use preventative drugs or preventative surgery to stop that cancer happening in the first place. So think about cancer susceptibility genetics, think about offering the right tests to the right patients and referring your patients so that they can get those tests. Next generation sequencing has transformed the whole of genomics and for example in cancer susceptibility genomics we've really benefited from the massive impact on cost, turnaround time and capacity but we do need to consider carefully the impact of dramatic expansion in testing in terms of ensuring that we have identified the pathways by which we offer it, who is consenting, who is delivering the test, who is returning the results, who is managing them in the longer term, that we do this safely, that we do it effectively, and we do it in a fashion that doesn't um, disrupt unduly from other NHS screening services or delivery of acute oncology.